Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am introducing my September project which I'm going to share with you on my channel and that is No Spend September. It's not technically a No Spend month, I am going to spend money but it is a No Buy month so I'm aiming to not bring anything into my house in the month of September. I feel like there's not really a super quick way for me to outline it other than to say that basic premise is I don't want to bring anything into the house for 30 days but there are two kind of reasons behind doing it. So the first is a financial reason and the second is sort of um, emotional mental reason. A little summary of each is coming your way so let's just kind of get on into it. I was going to be doing this anyway and I do want to kind of make that clear. This is not something I'm doing for YouTube, it's something I was going to do for myself. If you don't follow me on Instagram I'm just at Rose Keats over there and I would love to have you over there in part of that chat so please do follow me. But I put out a thing on my Instagram stories asking why do you follow me, what kind of content are you looking for? Now the majority of the answers were fashion and beauty which was nice because that kind of cements that what I'm mainly doing is what you want to see. But I had quite a lot of people asking me for budgeting things and I'm going to be honest I was quite taken aback. I don't know if I've kind of unintentionally given out the vibes that I'm a wonderful budgeter. I am not. I live within my means. I'm not in debt. But I'm not overspending beyond what I have the ability and disposable income to allow me to do so. I'm also not the smartest person in the world with money. I actually used to be pretty good with money when I was in uni. I was frittering a lot of money and I kind of had to have a word with myself and be like, right, where is your money going? Particularly because as a student you don't have a lot of money so you need to be quite on top of it. I actually got right on top of it, was good. I graduated, got my first graduate job, started earning, you know, a full-time salary and suddenly had a lot more money and over the years I think I've kind of slipped back into frittering it. If you're new to my channel, I went on my beauty no buy on the 15th of December 2017 and that was because I had a really bad year of mental health between November 2016 and November 2017 and that manifested in a really kind like a, a spending addiction basically but it was very specifically focused on beauty products. My spending's never been as bad as that since then but basically where I'm at now is that I've realised I've kind of gone back to the frittering that I used to do in uni before I sort of took note of it because I've gone on this beauty no buy and I know that's where the majority of my money was going so by all kind of logic I should in theory be swimming about in piles of cash, which I'm not doing at the moment and I'm a bit like, but how have I stopped that spending and I still don't have all that money? I kind of said that to myself at the end of 2018 after the first year of my spending man and I thought, have I moved my spending from beauty to fashion? So in 2019 I've actually started tracking every fashion item I buy. I started tracking as well like what I was wearing each day to try and get, a, get an idea of how much I owned versus how much I was actually utilising and wearing and started tracking my declutters and what were my reasons for, I say declutters, I give my clothes to the charity shop or put them in the recycling so they're not, they're not declutters and the, they're not going in the bin. So far it's, when I'm filming this it's 31st of August but when you're watching this in theory it's the 1st of September and at the moment I've spent just under £3,000 on clothes, fashion, accessories, all that stuff from like hair accessories, shoes, all kind of fashion items are included in that. That's, I'm not saying it's not a lot of money to spend on clothes but that that is not the majority of my money you know so I kind of went through a phase where it was all going in beauty stuff, I've stopped buying beauty stuff, thought it was clothes but now I've tracked it and I'm going it's not an, in terms of a percentage of my income and what I've got available to spend, it's not a worrying amount that I've spent on clothes. There's there's things I would like to change in my spending habits and I'm going to talk about that but it's basically that's not where my money's going either, it's the upshot of this. So I decided to go on this month long spending button as a way of trying to track where my money's going and that's the financial side of it for me. So. I do want to kind of make clear, if you're looking for super budgeting content, I'm not your person. I'm struggling in myself to figure out how to kind of acknowledge my privilege here without coming across as being like, I'm super wealthy and money doesn't mean anything to me because I'm not like that. I'm not in that position. I'm not rolling up to Chanel and buying a hat and bag on a whim. I'm not in that, that category of wealth at all. But I'm also, I'm responsible for me 
I'm a single person catering for myself and I'm not having to take anyone else's needs into account in my budget. I'm not providing for children. I'm not trying to split costs with a partner. I'm not responsible for half the running costs of a home. I am back in my family home. I live with my parents. There's plans to move out, etc. Obviously. But I have no huge responsibilities is kind of what I'm saying. Like, if you're looking for somebody to tell you how to make £100 feed a family of five for a week. Is that, I, I don't even know if that's a challenge or not. Like that, that is literally what I mean. I have no concept of whether that is a challenge or whether that is what a family of five would eat on for a week. Budgeting for me and me learning to be better with money and manage my money better, which is something I really want to do because as I've said, I'm kind of a bit like, where's all my money going? I don't know where it's going. It's something I, I want to do for myself. I am not going to be your guide to frugality. So if that's what you're looking for with budgeting, you're not in the right place. And I'm sorry if I've inadvertently given off the vibe that you are, because quite a lot of people ask me for budgeting content. And I was a bit like, I don't know where that's coming from. That's why I'm sharing this, because people seem to be really interested in how I budget. And I'm at the moment, just on a journey of trying to figure it out myself so I wasn't planning to share this in the first place that's I'm sharing this because you guys asked for budgeting kind of content and this is all I can give you is is the things that I'm doing and exploring because I'm not I have no in the grand scheme of life yes I have bills yes I have responsibilities but you know like like when I write out my bills I've got my contact lenses and Netflix and now TV and Amazon Prime and like my bills are not you know 80% of my income is going to pay my rent and water and electricity and then I have to feed my family off of the rest like that that's not my position and I cannot help you if that's what you're looking for so I'm really sorry if you are th this is just not the place for that there are other people vlogging about that and obviously if you're in real dire straits money wise please go to the Citizens Advice Bureau but if you are just kind of like me around the same age that you know trying to just learn to be better to get to where you want to be financially in life hopefully this might be interesting for you. To get back on track there are two reasons that I'm doing this so the first is financial and it is basically I at the moment have no real concept of where my money is going and I need to ascertain that and manage it and figure out am I happy with where my money is going that really came to light even just the other day. I was like, right, I'm going to do this, no buy. And then I thought, what I don't want to do is be like, well, I'm not buying anything this month, so I can spend whatever I like on X, Y, and Z. And I don't want to do that. So I thought, well, I put like a socialising budget in place so that I'm like, right, I can still go out, I can do this, but it has to be within this budget. And I was like, I don't even know what that budget would be, to be honest. And I put it out on Instagram and said like, how much do you guys spend socialising? And there was a huge range of answers. So that was deeply unhelpful. <laughs> um, but it's probably just very illustrative of, again, how people's money is assigned out and what they prioritise and whatever. So I was like, right, I don't know what socialising budget I need. So then I sat down and said, right, well, I went, went out for dinner with my friend Lindsay on Friday night and we spent £30 and that included a tip. I always tip. So yeah, so I spent £30 and I'm meeting Lauren tomorrow, which will be today when you guys are watching. So if Lauren and I go for lunch, say that's 20 quid, I was like, right, that's about £50. And because I never want to be that friend that's like, oh, sorry, I can't come out. Like, I don't have any money left. Like, I don't want to be that guy. So I wanted to put this budget in place and I was like right so save £50 a week for socialising my budget for socialising would be £200 and then I was like what else do I have on this month that I need to pay for I've got a facial and a massage booked for next weekend that'll be about £100 getting my hair done next weekend that's £100 getting my nails done later on that'll be £50 and then I've got another massage booked at the end of the month that'll be like £70 and I was just like oh here's where your money's going so my budget for a month when I wasn't buying anything, it was gonna be the best part of £400 on like treatment things. And to be fair, I don't usually have like two massages and a facial in a month. This is just kind of just worked out a bit weirdly. Plus £200 for socialising. I was like, well, there's like £600 straight away that you're not buying anything. And I know in my head, and I, I know, I've spoken to some people and I know they're the same, so I know I'm not the only one. But I know it sounds really stupid at the same time, but if I pay for something that I don't get a physical thing for, it doesn't actually register in my head that I've spent money. Which is, I think, probably why I'm in a position where I'm going, where's all my money going? Like, I don't know, because I've not been buying very much. You know, I've been on this quest to 
to buy less for quite a while just from the ethical kind of I don't want to talk about ethics too much because I feel like if you open that can of worms I'm just gonna be like yeah but you're doing all this wrong so all the only thing I'm doing or committing to doing at the moment is buying less which I've been doing so I knew my money was going somewhere else and it wasn't even until I sat and tried to be like what's a realistic budget for me to have to stick to that can be like slightly challenging and make me think about how I'm spending money but doesn't impose on me seeing my friend and I was like right that's a ridiculous budget if that's supposed to be my budget I'm already I'm kind of even in planning this have noted that what I've decided to do is not put a budget in place but just to spend wisely or as wisely as I can and take note of it so I'm going to do a money diary so I don't know how I'll split that into to videos if I'll report it all at the end of the month or do a video for each week I, I don't know yet so yeah, the financial side of it for me is that I need to learn, I need to acknowledge where I'm spending money and consider whether whether that's where I want to be spending money or not because at the moment I am saving up, um, saving up to A, start my own business or B, buy a house and I've got this kind of amount that I've got in my head that I'm like, when I get that, that either can be my business kick off or I need to save a little bit more but it could become a house deposit. I could clearly be saving more. That's, that's the financial side of it for me is I want to learn but more what I'm doing with my money, consider it more and potentially save a little bit more. So it's a necessity in that it's for me to achieve what I want to achieve, achieve my goals in life. I can do that quicker if I can get more of a handle on my finances because I'll reach my savings goals quicker but it is absolutely not a necessity in terms of you know I'm not going to lose my house or anything like that. Like I just want to make that really clear because yeah I was just a bit taken aback by how many people ask me for budgeting stuff so that's the financial side of it that's why I'm doing this is just for me to be better with money, to use my money more wisely and to distribute my money more wisely not necessarily because I need to scrimp and save any penny and I acknowledge that that's a really privileged position. Just once again if that's what you're looking for this isn't the place like the financial impacts of my spending on me are really not the thing I'm massively worried about like yeah I'm a bit like oh yeah you're spending too much money in this even from having thought about it and I do want to change that but the big impact for me um, in terms of the way I've been spending and the emotions attached to spending are really much more in the mental and emotional category and that's that is the real reason that I want to do this so financial bit of the video done let's talk mental health and emotional approaches to shopping for a start I've always shopped and that is how when that really bad period of mental health hit me that is how that allowed itself to manifest in that shopping addiction as much as it was very much targeted on beauty shopping was such a part of my routine that it was easy for that shopping to just be more and more and more a part of my routine and if I hadn't been in the habits that I was in that might not have manifested and gotten to the extent that it did but moving on from that and now that I look at it even from a very young age and particularly through high school when I suppose everyone's sort of trying to figure out what their identity is and again and I think this is how it manifested when I was really depressed is that I was attaching this emotion to things and I was like my life is going to be better when I own this. And then I would own it and I'd be like, do you know what, my life is not suddenly better because I own this, but it's going to be better when I own this. And I'd find the next thing. And I don't really do that at the moment. I kind of do it to an extent, not in a way that I think I'm going to be happier as a person, which is really what I'm saying when I said my life was going to be better. It was like, my life will be better and I will be happy when I own this thing and that never never works obviously and I know that doesn't work and the thing is I think now the way I've been shopping it's not so much that I will be happier when I own this but it is still that sort of my life will be better mentality because I get very fixated on things that I want to buy and I really romanticise things that I want to buy. This is where I completely differ from and I've spoken about this quite extensively with Lindsay and Lauren and Jill to maybe a slightly lesser extent but within our little group of four I think I'm the only one that does this. Last week I bought a coat. I bought this coat. Having seen it on Instagram 10 days earlier and becoming really fixated on it 
and I was planning all the outfits that I was going to wear with this coat and this coat was going to go with this and it was going to go with that and that was just going to be such a great time to wear this outfit. You know I see things and I do, I start styling them, I start working them into my wardrobe and I start thinking about scenarios in which I will wear this outfit and I really emotionally attach myself to things. I become very fixated. When I was very depressed it was kind of instantly like as soon as I had the thing I was like right I need the next thing. I'm not shopping like that in that compulsive way but I'm still shopping in this very emotional way that I think has the potential to be dangerous if I was to fall into a bad pattern of mental health again. So I want to kind of break the emotional way that I shop and I think part of that emotion is caused by the sort of excitement of seeing something and coveting it and you know because I when I was shopping in a bad way at the start there was always a research process and I really like that was how I could get really locked into an item would be seeing it in somebody's YouTube and then googling it and reading somebody else's review and then whatever it was and it was in a way it was almost easier with beauty products and I don't know if that's partly why it manifested itself so much in beauty products because there are so many beauty blogs and it's so easy to google a certain item and get reviews on it whereas when it's like fashion I mean maybe you could google like say like this pink ASOS blazer and you might get some bloggers styling it up but like you're gonna get more if you just put in like styling a pink blazer and it's not a specific pink blazer or styling an oversized blazer or whatever and I didn't want that I wanted these specific things to focus on. So beauty is much easier to be like I want a review of the Urban Decay Naked Basics palette or whatever it is, whatever your item is. It's much easier to facilitate that with beauty than it is with fashion. That was how it started. Now by the end of it there was no reviewing process, I just wanted to want something. Any research process went out the window. I would just literally be at a counter and be like tell me what's new, like tell me what's good. And basically somebody would just have to say, oh this is really nice and I'd be like, great, thanks, I'll have it. Whereas I'm not like that with clothing. But that initial way of shopping is still very much the way I shop for clothes. But it's less reviews and looking for bloggers wearing it so much as it is fixating on it in my head and thinking about all the ways in which I'll wear it and then it is kind of doing that thing where I'm like my life is going to be so enriched because I'm going to look so stylish wearing this thing in this combo of items at this event. You know the thing is realistically the likes of the coat that I bought I love it and I don't regret buying it at all and that's not what this is about. It's not that I regret anything I purchased and I don't think I do. I think I might do a video this month um, when I get all the things that I've bought this year together because because I've been tracking them on my spreadsheet I know what they all are and I might like rank them and be like if I was standing in this shop would I buy this again x amount of months down the line or whatever like I might do something like that actually just to review what I have bought this year but generally I'm actually quite good at buying things that I know that are me and that fit into my wardrobe and that I will wear but it is still that sort of this is going to enrich my life and it's like well <laughs> Is that quote going to enrich your life when you didn't know that quote existed until you saw it on Instagram 10 days ago? Is that same process of seeing things and becoming fixated on them and purchasing them and I am much more discerning than it was but the kind of pattern still there is the point that it could just become not great again and I don't want to be attaching my life being enriched in any way to an item. Um, and I think it's really interesting because one of my friends used to work for a luxury beauty brand and she actually she said something in conversation really casually where she was talking about a certain dress and she called it her and she was like oh look at me like personifying clothes you don't work at this place anymore and I was like this is really interesting were you told to personify things when you worked at this brand and she was like well no but I think we all did and we all sort of picked it up from other people and I think that's a big part of it I do think we personify things and I think you know even when you look particularly at luxury handbags, they've all got names. You don't just want red croc handbag, it's the Mulberry Bayswater or, you know, the Darley Satchel or wh whatever. They've all got names. These names are all very cleverly chosen to start in your mind associating that item with certain things. That really works on me 
in a way that it doesn't work on like my friend Lauren is the other shopper in our group but she doesn't romanticize things the way that I do and she's much like it's something I'm really grateful for having Lauren in my life for is that I think I'm much more aware of value because likes of like Lauren was looking for new makeup sponges recently the Real Techniques ones whatever it is in Boots and she was like I'm gonna go to TK Maxx and see if they've got like, a better value set if I ran out of makeup sponges I'd be like, oh, this isn't a fun thing to spend money on, but I'll go to Space NK and buy a beauty blender. Or if I was pinching the pennies and making my money go further, I'd be like, oh, I'll go to Boots and buy a Real Techniques beauty blender and a, a, or a Real Techniques makeup sponge, whatever it's called. And I wouldn't think about, I'd just be like, well, that's, that is what they cost. Whereas Lauren's much better, although she shops and although she likes shopping the same way that I do, she's much better at kind of looking at something and going, that's a lot of money for what this thing is. You know, she's got much more of a grip on what different things are worth, which I don't think I think about enough. She's a much more practical person than me anyway. You know, I'd say Lindsay and I are kind of the sort of romantics of the group in that, not so much romantics, but that we will romanticise things or we'll really latch onto abstract concepts. And basically Lindsay and I are very non-practical, dreamy, romantic -y people. And Lauren and Jill are much more pragmatic and practical and like the people you'd want on hand in a crisis. Me and Lindsay would just be at the back empathising with all the people in the crisis and we'd be, you know, crying our eyes out, really wanting to help. But like Lauren and Jill would be able to be like, right, what actually needs done here? Right, let's phone this person, let's get this done, whatever. So that's kind of how it breaks down. So it's quite interesting that that's Lauren's nature and she's a shopper. Jill's not a shopper and she only shops when she has to basically. When she needs to buy jeans it's because she's worn holes in her other jeans. And Lindsay's the same. Lindsay's a very practical shopper but she's not 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 a practical person. I don't mean like Lindsay and I are useless in a practical situation in which is how I feel that I'm making a sound. She's able to apply this logic of I need this therefore I will buy it, not this is beautiful therefore I will have it and it will enrich my life and I will wear it to all these places which is what I do. And I think it's that kind of thing of can you admire something's beauty without wanting to own it? When we went to New York in 2016 there was a fairy tale fashion exhibition which was just a dream. I mean I think we all loved it but I think it's really up Lindsay and I streets were very into fairy tales. Like Lindsay I think is good at being able to admire this dress and say this is beautiful but also I don't go to balls every weekend so I don't need to own it. Whereas I'm like this is so beautiful and if it was in my life I would wear it to here and this would happen and it would just be so great. And I know it sounds ridiculous but that is that's the way that I react to things that are beautiful. Whereas I think like Lindsay is much better at saying that is beautiful but it is not remotely practical to my life. That's what I need to get on top of is that instinct that I have that I want to own something and make it part of my life rather than just being able to admire something. Like if I was to Marie Kondo my house I would have nothing practical left because a pair of jeans does not spark joy. I don't care about jeans. That's actually the one item that I am very practical in. I will wear holes in my jeans before I buy new jeans because I don't care about jeans. Jeans don't spark off any wonderful situation and that's really what I want to kind of address the imbalance of is being able to admire things that are beautiful but not practical without needing to own them because I don't want to kill my joy and I don't want to like not love things but I want to be able to learn to love things without needing to own them or without needing to make myself a part of them and just be able to love them for what they are and accept that they're not mine and that's fine. It doesn't mean they don't exist in the world and it doesn't mean that beauty's not there. And be able to approach shopping for things a little bit more like I do shop for jeans where I'm just like, oh, I'll wait until like, you know, there's holes in them because I don't need a pair of jeans until the ones that I've currently got aren't fit for purpose anymore. And yes, there is more to this. I know you're all like, Jesus Christ, shut up. Well done if you've got this far in the video by the way. But the other thing about this shopping and these fantasies that I'm making in my head when I see an item and the way that I start thinking about styling it, it's all taking up so much space in my brain. And I've been really aware recently, I've been having a lot of problems focusing. I've been having them for quite a while but I feel like I've just not been addressing them quite frequently. Like I feel like I need to always be doing multiple things. Like if I watch a film, I need to be on my phone at the same time. I find even if I try to focus sometimes, like if I try to read a book, like I'll get to the end of the page and be like, my mind was so busy thinking about something else that whilst I was sitting reading this book, I haven't taken any of it in. And of course we all have times like that, but I feel like it's 
been very consistent for me for the last little while and I think a big part of my the way that I distract my brain because I think basically this is rooted in I think in 2017 my brain went into some kind of shutdown mode as a means of survival. It wasn't used for like a whole year more or less and I'm now trying to use my brain again and it's I'm finding it very frustrating because I'm trying to work in a writing project at the moment and I feel like I'm just like I don't know the words to find for this and I feel like I feel stupid basically but I think it's just because my brain had not been used I suppose it's a bit like a runner you don't just not run for a year then go do a marathon you would have to start training again so I feel like I need to train my brain and I feel like my brain gets overwhelmed quite easily and I feel like it looks for an easy out because it's not used to being worked because I basically didn't use it for a year and I feel like the focusing on items and the thinking about the procuring of items and what I'm going to do with those items is a really easy non-taxing way for my brain to distract itself and I feel like it distracts itself when I don't want it to when I want it to focus on something to help me like producing writing so I feel like I just want less in my brain to be thinking about shopping and I think maybe just doing a 30 days where you're not buying anything so it's not great but I'm quite an all or nothing person and see when I went on my beauty spending ban basically unsubscribed from people that I was following that were constantly just doing hauls and unfollowed trend mood and stop looking for news about what was new and it was just suddenly like right cool I don't care anymore and I'm not going looking for it so I'm not filling my brain with what's new and thinking about getting it so I'm kind of hoping in a way I can sort of almost turn that on for clothing as well and, and I, I keep focusing this on clothing it's not just clothing it's everything it's things all types of things I think clothing's taken up the biggest amount of space in my brain even though it's not taking up the financial side which is why there is that financial side because the clothing's not a financial issue but it's an issue in my head with how much space it's taking up and how much brain power it's taking up when I want to assign that brain power to other things. The same as like the financial side of things will help me hit my savings goals which will let me hit things that I want to try and do with those savings more quickly. By stopping using my brain power for shopping and attaining things in that whole process I can put more of that brain power into writing which like that's my end goal is to hopefully at some point work as a full-time writer that's what I'd like to do like that's my dream job is to be a writer I'm so busy filling my brain with with emotions about things that I can't write and that's like I'm literally stopping myself from doing what I need to do to get to where I want to get to I need to get a grip on that and the last thing that I want to talk about under the sort of mental act is just and again it's <laughs> it's all an impact on brain power and how much time is spent brain power wise on other things it's just the sheer volume of stuff that I own now I don't know can you guys see this vanity now that I've moved out the frame now usually I clean that off before I film and by clean it off I mean I move the stuff to my bed then whenever I want to get into bed I have to move the stuff back but currently my bed's covered in other stuff that I had to move out of the way when I was getting ready this morning you couldn't swing a cat in my bedroom at the moment because I have just got too much stuff that is a simple fact. The beauty stuff I really do still think is taking up the majority of the space. A big part of this and a big part of that first year of doing that beauty spending bank was that I really did think I was going to do a year of that and have worked through so much product and cleared so much stuff out that I wasn't going to have a problem anymore and I started this year saying well that's not happened so I needed to go into a second year of a spending ban and at the moment my instinct is that I'll be on a third year of a beauty spending ban next year because I'm not running out of anything well that's a lie actually this is a great illustrative point is that I have almost run out of one thing there is one skincare category that I'm down to one item in and I don't know what it is and I had it because I put it on my spreadsheet so I physically had this. It's at some point since I made my spreadsheet in December 2017 disappeared but it, it exists somewhere but I don't know where because I've got so much stuff stuffed everywhere around my house. It's in a box, it will not be thrown out, it will exist but I don't know where it is and that's the really frustrating thing is that I cannot find things I own that I'm looking for because I own so much. It's taking up so much space and it's also taking up so much mental space. It literally stresses me out that I have no physical space to be in. And I don't think I realised how much mental energy being in a cluttered environment was taking up until I started doing discoveries and declutters this year, which is where basically once I've used a makeup product out of 
this storage here I put it into this is all the stuff that I used in the month of August and then I will film I will go through this and I will film that process and I will talk about things that I rediscovered in my collection that I really like and want to keep and things that I maybe want to declutter. Once I have sorted that out the declutter things go wherever they're going and the discoveries and things that I want to keep go into a box which is over the other side of my room over there taking up space in the floor but everything being crammed in that box because it's not accessible when it's in the box it's like all just piled on top of each other it's taking up a lot less physical space in my room than it was when it was here it really wasn't until that space started opening up through the discoveries and declutter series that I was like I feel a lot better because when I look at that it's not packed that's when I really started to be like this clutter is mentally affecting you but the other thing is just how much my time is taken by that clutter and I was listening to I've been I'm not ready to say that I'm on a journey to becoming a minimalist but I do want to take the the essence of minimalism and attach it a little bit more to my life but to me it's not a minimalist aesthetic that I'm after like that whole scandy furniture and white walls ironically because I've got white walls does not appeal to me but I did read a definition of minimalism which is that there is nothing in your possession which is not beautiful or useful. Basically everything that you own has a use, so like your jeans that you wear, even if they don't spark joy, or it's beautiful, i.e. something that sparks joy, like a ball gig. And I know for myself that so much of the stuff that I have that is beautiful is not practical and there's not a lot of overlap, so that would still end up me owning a lot of stuff if I was to apply that but it is what I would like to apply so I would like to get to a point where I don't own anything that is not beautiful or useful but that will still be a lot of stuff so in that sense I'm never going to be the minimalist who has 10 things in their wardrobe but I would really like to be more discerning about what I bring in but I, again though I do think I'm already kind of down that path but anyway this is a tangent again I've been reading a lot about minimalism and listening to podcasts and things like that and one of the podcasts I was listening to said that the statistic is that the average American woman spends four hours a day cleaning and maintaining her home now they were including food prep time and that is part of that home maintenance and I sent this to Lauren and I was like that's really shocking and then I was like actually it's not if my if I owned a house rather like I only maintain my room and it can easily take like last Sunday so I generally do it on a Sunday and actually by the time I think about lifting all the stuff off the floor to be able to hoover it then having to clear off every surface to be able to wipe it and then having to spend that time putting that back it takes me four hours easily probably more to maintain this room and that's not a deep clean where I'm like taking everything out of my wardrobe and washing the wardrobe down which I don't do every week and you know the real really in-depth cleaning and I was like actually like if I think about it if I had say a four bedroom house in theory in this magical house there's four bedrooms say there's an ensuite in one of the bedrooms then there's two other general bathrooms one upstairs one downstairs say two hallways, one upstairs, one downstairs, a stairway which is its own thing, there's 10 areas to maintain, say I have a kitchen, a utility room, um, a living room, a study and a conservatory, quite an average house, so there's 15 rooms. If it takes me four hours to clean my bedroom and I had a house that had 15 areas in it and okay fair enough I'm probably not going to spend four hours doing a stairway so let's take that out and say the 14 areas, we'll count the stairs in with the hall, say there's 14 areas and they take me four hours each so that is 56 hours a week that I would spend maintaining my home and that's the living areas of the house that's not taking into consideration in my current house in my parents house I've got loads of stuff we've got two cellars I've got stuff in both those cellars I've got stuff in the loft like that's not taking into consideration any time spent going into the loft and sorting stuff out or going into the cellars and sorting stuff out. That's literally the living areas. Four hours a day actually is less than what I would spend maintaining my home if I had a full home that was at the level that my bedroom is at. Now I would hope obviously that if I had a full home things would be spread out and, and there's also an aspect of it where I have a lot of stuff because at one point I did think I was moving out and I'd started to accumulate things that in retrospect I maybe wouldn't have bought if I'd known that that wasn't going to work out but that's a whole other tangent as well so basically what I'm saying is I own too much stuff and it's taking up too much mental space, too much mental time 
and too much physical time. Even last week I filmed a video and I lost the memory card. In my bedroom there's a memory card with a video on it and I don't know where it is. And again last week when I was filming the bit that joins, that the camera screwed onto, that joins it onto the tripod was on my bed but I'd moved the stuff from here onto my bed too and that had been on my bed first so it ended up under that stuff. I couldn't remember what I'd done with it and I was running about over my whole house. It took me an hour to find that thing just to start filming because I literally, I couldn't remember putting it in my bed and I couldn't see it. So I thought it was downstairs. I thought I'd taken it to the computer or whatever. I would really like to get to a point in my life, in my house, in my room where everything kind of has a place and I think that's a really far off goal for me but I know that the first step to achieving that is stopping contributing to the amount of stuff that I have. I am honestly at a point, I, I declutter my wardrobe, I'm bad with beauty for decluttering because I have a lot of guilt around that but I'm actually really good at decluttering through my wardrobe because most of it goes to charity or to recycling so I don't have the same guilt around that. Generally things like my books and notebooks and that's a big part of my issue is that books overspill everywhere but I am quite good at if I didn't like a book giving it into the charity shop or whatever so at the moment my main priority is not let's find stuff to get rid of because I do that quite regularly and I, I am kind of at a point where I like everything that I own I'm not saying it's all perfect but I like most of it. There's nothing that is an obvious this could all go type thing. But what I can do if I can't reduce what I own is I can stop adding to it. And that's got to be my first first port of call. That's why I'm doing a no spend September. So I'm going to do a money diary every day. Hopefully analyse my financial habits and how I feel about spending and what I'm spending and what I would like to maybe start doing differently. Yeah, as I say, this was something I was going to do for myself. It was never something I was planning to do on YouTube, but I get asked for budgeting content. So all I can really do for budgeting content is bring you on the journey that I'm on to learning to manage my finances. And I hope that it's somewhat helpful to some of you guys. And yeah, I would love to hear any feedback you've got, any tips you've got for stopping shopping, for how to be less overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that you own, how to stop emotionally attaching to items that you don't own and needing to own them and having that, like, and it is a very compulsive need. Like, see when I decide I don't want something, like, as my friend Jill said, she was like, well, sometimes if there's something I want, I'll say I'll get it if I'm still thinking about it in three days or whatever. And I'm like, I'll still be thinking about it in three days. Like, I know I will because when I decide I want something, I fixate on it and I don't think about anything else. So I know that it takes over my mind. So if you've got any tips for stopping that, that would be great. But yeah, otherwise, I'm going to finally finish this video here. Thank you so much for watching to the end if you did. Like, that's absolutely amazing. I don't know if I'll even watch this to the end. I'll be so utterly sick of the sound of my own voice by the time I edit this. It'll be like never again. You'll never see another YouTube video from me ever again because I never want to edit myself after this one. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this. I really hope this is going to be helpful or if not helpful, just entertainment. You can just laugh that no matter how badly you're doing, I'm more of a mess. So yay. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I will speak to you in my next video.